yang kita uh, kita faham eh macam mana dia akan dia akan behave the, the, the apa ni propagation tu akan behave uh, dan kita akan pandailah mana nak letak dia punya base station dia dekat mana atau in our case ketika access point kita dekat mana yang best uh, supaya uh, maximum coverage boleh terima dalam satu satu tempat so predict the average signal strength rss receiver signal strength uh, to estimate radio coverage area jadi uh, they, they can come up with some kind of mapping uh, macam topografi punya mapping for for an area ataupun even dalam bangunan uh, with respective colors yang represent the the strength of the signal jadi they do this thing they get lots of data dan daripada situ they they, they retrofit retrofit maknanya dia trace back guna whatever method regression auto regression and so on and come up with some kind of uh, mathematical ataupun statistical model eh, yang closely boleh represent that behavior yang kita kita measure tadi so lots of measurement have to be done before that so uh, uh, dia ada dua type large scale propagation model maknanya dia punya behavior uh, bertukar apa, over a larger distance characterize signal strength over larger TR transmitter to receiver separations hundreds and thousands of meters meters lah bukan kilometers so uh, So the signal doesn't change uh, so fast. Yeah, they change over this amount of distance. Then on top of that, ada small scale fading, yang fluctuate, yang I mentioned just now due to multipath fading. Uh, rapid fluctuation over short distance or short time duration. So the um, the the signal macam uh, multipath tu, they either add or or cancel each other out uh, over a short, very short distance yeah, depending yeah, over short distance and over over short time as well so uh, ini they call multipath fading and even Doppler shift kita akan tengok juga Doppler ni. Uh, ni dia representation dia, kita dah tengok juga benda ni Uh, dan uh, I mentioned, oh, kita went through this free space, free space, free space model. Yeah, all these factors ni, the power received yeah, uh, over this after distance d is equal to this equation. Trans power transmitter gain of the amplifier, gain of the receiver times lambda, which is the wavelength squared divided by 4 pi squared because it is a sphere and distance factor d squared times l l is other other losses new feeder losses and sebagainya dan normally kita akan uh, logarithm kan dia uh, uh, because by by logarithm kita ambil dia punya indices dia punya power ya dan kita boleh uh, represent them into summative equation Yeah, macam ni this is how we represent it power receive at distance d in dbm unit dia pun akan letak sini is equal to power transmitted in dbm plus 10 log uh, 10 log gain p and so on yeah. so after that you simply uh, add, add them you don't have to multiply macam ni But of course, you have to use logarithm. So um, only logarithm uh, is used here. Um, so path loss, free, free space path loss, both taken as positive values in in DB. Yeah. So path loss name itself is a loss and negative. So the value is represented as 
positif lah. Uh, so path loss normalized versus transmitted power. Jadi uh, the power received at the receiver divided by the transmitter. So that's another representation. Uh, how much power is received as opposed to how much power uh, was transmitted. So this is the equation tadi. Uh, therefore, the power loss uh, is equal to inilah, semua logarithm dia. 20 log d minus 10 log this term here minus 20 this because of the squared here log lambda over 4 pi uh, so prof, this is prof. yeah kenapa dia singkan yang distance lah dengan yang dalam, dalam kurungan tu ya ya tak 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 apa dengar saya saya kuat sikit oops saya nak kuatkan volume dia ah uh, again sorry tapi dia, 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 dia keluarkan yang distance tu. Oh distance yeah. ni because yeah. distance ni um, normally is the distance that kita vary. Uh, ini, ini yang dimaksudkan ni PLD ini maknanya power loss at a certain distance. Jadi bila kita move around kita buat mapping tu uh, is, is the distance yang jadi parameter dia. All, all the all the rest are considered fixed lah. You because you don't change the gain of the the antenna very very frequently. You don't. Uh, jadi that's why um, they take this thing out as as a separate parameter. Uh, faham tak? Because dia 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 nak cari power loss at distance d. Jadi, um, that's why they take out kat sini, 20 log this, uh, D base 10, and minus, this, this are gain sebenarnya. Jadi, gain yeah, in loss punya uh, representation is, is a negative. Jadi, minus 10 log gain which is gain of the antennas minus 20 log gain of a lot of this lambda over 4 pi times 20 that represents the power loss at distance t itu yang dia nak cari eh, dia bukan nak cari uh, apa lain dia nak cari uh, apakah uh, signal yang yang dia boleh dapat pada certain certain distance but it is a power pass loss lah not a receive power i i hope i hope you can take it for now if you can move um kalau free free space maknanya tak ada obstruction only atmosphere yeah. represented as this l free at distance d is purely distance dengan exponent uh, this kenapa dia letak minus eh? um, it should be positive but anyway this is an exponent uh, yang bergantung kepada um, situasi ataupun keadaan tempat tu kalau kalau free space tak ada objek then 2 lah normally exponent dia uh, then this is represented as this in db yeah, db db is a ratio of two gains jadi uh, the ratio the, the the free space path loss is this minus 20 uh, log of this lambda by d and this one jadi Bila loss dia minus, maknanya dia jadi gain lah. Uh, in this case, uh, this is this is a, a loss ni. Okay. Part due to attenuation in free space only. Yeah. Notice in free space, not in the 
in the uh, building, not in in the jungle. Uh, this is in an open face, open space, like uh, maybe uh, you know a, a field, or it could be I don't know a desert. Or in our case, Malam, we we saw the satellite, and this could be satellite. Okay, let's move on. What happens? Uh, so this was where we stopped probably last week. Now I want to see what's the next slide that we should be looking at. Now, I have notes on Theodore Rappaport. The PNR is not very exciting. I just want to see if there are some other PowerPoint that we can go through that gives a better representation. Ah, okay, this one by Xiao. Okay, let's go through this one. There are two sets of slides. I think we we can get a good. Oh, this is satellite. We can leave it for now. I want to take this one, and there was another one. want to see which one to do first lecture six and lecture okay so when we do lecture six first so what do you see now um i am looking at wireless communication engineering for 2004 summer uh, uh, eh? okay good um what i was already Baik, jadi uh, ada couple of uh, sets of slide daripada ni Xiao, Mingbo Xiao. Uh, tapi dia Texas ni. Texas. Walaupun lama tapi uh, still relevant, it's all same thing. So let's go through the punya material. Yeah, apa benda watermelon? <laughs> watermelon problem now. What is model? Well, so this I can skip. Uh, okay, maybe antenna. We can talk about antenna. Antenna is electrical conductor or systems of conductors. Kalau dulu kita pakai macam aluminium tubes yang eh, untuk television ke untuk uh, even transmitters, daripada the radio kita, ada pada apa radio transmitter kita, electrical conductors, or system of conductors, maknanya dia ada array, and then the transmission radiates electromagnetic energy into space. So because of the resonation, the punya frequency itu, and the distance, uh, the length of the conductors. They, they produce so-called uh, standing wave, which, which is a resonate res at a cer certain um, uh, frequency, depending on the dimension of the antenna. They can radiate electromagnetic energy. The other dual component, electric field and magnetic field, perpendicular to each other. And and they form this so-called electromagnetic energy and radiate into space. And then if we put a similar antenna, we can regenerate back the signal yang, yang was transmitted tadi. They collect the electromagnetic antenna and they generate back voltage. So this become the uh, medium where they transmit signals over atmosphere. So the first one 
the person that does this over long distance was Marconi. Yeah, Marconi ni is Italian, tapi sebab dia buat eksperimen tu between Ireland and Newfoundland. Newfoundland is in Canada now. So that was uh, I remember it, 19 something. It's not a long time ago. 19 something. He was the first person to do that. Um, so radi tiap antena tu kita characterize dia dengan radiation pattern ya. Yeah? So we have graphical representation of radiation properties of the antenna uh, as two dimensional cross section. So dia dia boleh propagate in uh, in in apa in all direction 360 degrees and and uh, apa ni dia punya elevation as well. I hope ada some gambar tapi sure. Now instead of uh, them radiating in all directions, some some of them we can control so that the power focus on a certain direction. So it's it's just like your torch light. If you look at your torch light at the back too, the other reflector. So that's why you can shine on one direction. Yeah. Otherwise, kalau tak ada reflector tu, you know, the light is diffuse. You can you can see over a distance. So this is called beam, and this beam they define beam width, the point where the power drop to half. So they panggil half power beam width or three minus three dB, which is now a measure of directivity of the antenna. So reception pattern receiving antennas equivalent to radiation uh, pattern. So maknanya antenna receive antenna pun dia boleh ada dia punya uh, res, uh, apa, receptivity just like macam at earth station yang kita or you saw semalam we have antenna dish yang yang focus on the uh, satellite so they they act uh, as exactly as like the transmitter at the satellite and also like our direct to the home broadcast in Astro, you see that there are uh, dishes eh, at every home walaupun dia flat yeah? dia flat uh, so they they collect uh, all the signals back so antenna the other the basic one is called isotropic antenna nah? because they are right radiant isotropic means it, it's all in all direction but this is idealized idealized maknanya it is not practical it's not something that you can you can realize in practice it's just a theoretical model for you to do some kind of uh, analysis it radiates power equally in all directions now the the basic one yang practical is dipole Dipole maknanya it dia ada dua lah dua bagian, you know, one uh, in in different direction and you you fit at the center. So uh, dia ada half wave, so dia punya one of dia punya element tu is equivalent to half of the wavelength of your signal that you want to transmit. Sometimes they call it Hertz antenna, and there's quarter wave also. Uh, called Marconi and then parabolic but parabolic ni dia actually reflective antenna dia bukan antenna by itself dia ada dia ada dia punya uh, transmitter um, dekat dia punya focal point tu yang yang shoot into the the parabola and the parabola will reflect it into into that direction Unfortunately, the diagram is in it, so it's difficult to. Oh, I, I could have switched to another picture, but I, I guess these are basic things that some of you young what antenna and propagation would have been familiar by now, but only for the benefit of the others. Antenna gain. So every antenna you can design in such a way that they possess a gain. So a gain means that it, it has a a tendency to radiate more than the isotropic yang basic antenna yang idealized tadi. So power output in a particular direction. So you when you uh, direct it to a particular direction macam satellite, no? so that is the gain of the antenna. 
compared to that produced by that isotropic antenna. So that's why isotropic antenna ni is, is just a reference. It's, it's not something that people use in practice or you can't even you can't even use you can't even produce it because it is like a spear. Even dipole antenna cannot produce that. Effective area. So uh, this is also considered the area of the effective area antenna is related to the physical size and shape of the antenna. So the largest uh, antenna element here, yeah, for example, that is the effective area. So you have to multiply it and this as well. Antenna gain, effective area. And uh, this one we have seen, relationship between antenna gain and the effective areas. So the gain, you have to time effective area. And this is what you get. Uh, propagation mode, kita dah mention dulu. Ground wave, sky wave, line of sight. Yeah, we go very quickly. Uh, ground wave can follow contour of the earth and goes around the globe for considerable distance, along thousands of kilometers, uh, but very low frequency, up to two megahertz. Example, AM radio. Uh, you don't have this anymore, I believe. Amateur, uh, it's not amateur radio, it's called amplitude modulation radio but very noisy uh, this is sky wave i showed you last week as well ionosphere they, they bounce up and down the this layer called ionosphere due to ionization yeah uh, okay it can travel number of hops back and forth and towards uh, the upper the destination very long destination examples amateur radio and cb citizen band radio and the last one is line of sight and this is what we normally experience here uh you uh you can see between transmitter and receiver they they have a line of sight they can see uh, if you look at through binocular you can see that direction that that line there uh, essentially, much um, our phone last study. What we are doing, we even though we have obstruction, but essentially, if we remove the obstruction, this line of sight. Okay, like satellite, but uh, satellite they are gonna very, you know, you're talking about higher band, KU band, fourteen gigahertz. So there's no problem. They are not affected by ionosphere. Um, Ground communication antenna within effective line of sight, line of sight, S-I-G-H-T, due to refraction. So they, they could refract a bit, they can bend around the surface of the earth, but they are still considered as line of sight because uh, they, can, they can arrive at the uh, receiver yeah, at, at a certain strength. Now, these are all the other phenomena um, which we have also discussed. I think. Uh, first, refraction. Yeah, refraction means that the, the, the EM wave or microwave, when they hit an object, they, they can bend around it. Yeah, very much like your, uh, our, our sound, sound, our voice. So our voice is essentially um, atmospheric pressure it is not electromagnetic wave unless we talk through through phone yeah? so our voice can be heard around yeah around the block around the corner of uh, of, a, of a block or a building because they experience bending and this is called refraction so uh, Velocity of EM wave is a function of density of the medium. Medium in this case, um, it could be free space, it could be atmosphere, atmosphere itself, or it could be um, a waveguide. Waveguide is, is like a cable, the PDA is hollow, just like a pipe. And the electromagnetic waves just simply bounce back and forth through that um, waveguide. Ataupun for those who have done fiber optic, it's like fiber optics. 
It just uh, is a hollow thing. So when wave changes, medium speed changes. So kalau misalnya kata medium, different medium, then the speed of the, the EM propagation also changes. And when it meets uh, another medium, yeah, let's say from free space to a, to a building, yeah, then that is a, there's a boundary yeah, between two mediums. And then if it is at the corner, it will be able to bend and regenerate into uh, behind, behind the uh, objects. Um, so for direct line of sight, panggil optical line of sight, where if you uh, put on your binocular yeah, from one side to the other, you can see the other end. So the distance is this, 3.57 root h. H is the height, height of the antenna. But for radio, for Earth, they can bend a bit due to refraction. So uh, you have another factor here that can come in and it's called adjustment factor to account for refraction. So rule of thumb is K is equal to four over three. Meaning to say now that the effective area or effective distance can be further than optical line of sight. So those days and microwave um, distance communication are through microwave microwave links. So every 30 kilometers, uh, they have to have a microwave tower for a repeater. They, they, they receive a signal and then retransmit the other end. So mm -hmm. maximum distance between two antennas for line of sight propagation is therefore equal to this, uh, 3.57 root kh1 plus kh2 where uh, h1, h2 are the height of antenna if there, if there are up to two antennas. Now, there are other uh, factors that influence the signal yeah? that uh, either attenuate it or, or uh, interferes with it, sometimes called impairment. Yeah? So this, this word impairment means anything that make the signal uh, worsen. So uh, we, we, we've seen attenuation and uh, distortion due to attenuation. We've seen free pass loss, uh, free space loss just now. Now noise. So noise is not uh, something that you can get rid of. You have to contend with, uh, especially in the electronics. So your, your receiver um, using electronics do generate um, noise that that you cannot get rid of so you just have to factor it into the design so that the receive signal is much more than the noise that is generated in the system atmospheric absorption so uh, there are certain phenomena where um, the atm atmosphere itself uh, absorb you know, your your signal especially long distance and satellite due to ionization and whatnot. So we mentioned about multipath, we mentioned about refraction. And okay, just now I said thermal noise, just this noise include thermal noise, but there's also noise uh, in, in the propagation channel itself. So this one just now I mentioned was thermal noise in the uh, receiver electronics. All right, so attenuation is clear. It's something that uh, subject to, uh, you know, strength fall of the strength, signal strength fall over, over a distance because, you know, you are sending something over some distance and, and they have to propagate through some kind of medium. 
uh, in the atmosphere which also consume ataupun absorb some of the energy and therefore the strength of the signal will fall over some distance. Attenuation factors for unguided media. Unguided media is like our space learning, our radio. Guided in macam cable, waveguide and so on. So receive signal must have sufficient strength so that the circuitry in the receiver can interpret the signal. So I mentioned just now earlier, we want to design in such a way that the receive signal is uh, has a certain margin that the receiver should be able to uh, to detect and process and that's called something called fade margin we i think we, we have some example that we can examine later so the signal must maintain a level sufficiently higher than the noise to be received without error so i, I highlighted this one we know what the noise is we can calculate and then uh, we know what the signal is going to be at a certain distance at a certain terrain and then you you can design the receiver uh, that is good enough for all situations attenuation is greater at higher frequencies causing distortion so attenuation uh, loss is proportional to frequency yeah, lambda, uh, or inversely proportional to lambda. At higher frequency, attenuation is greater. And that is why um, when we use higher frequency for our uh, carrier, uh, either Wi-Fi or cellular, uh, if we go higher, 5 gigahertz, the uh, propagation is poorer. It, it's uh, confined to a smaller space. Kalau mesti kata Wi-Fi, we can use 5 gigahertz, but once you, you move away from that AP, the signal will drop significantly. Like, like my house where, where I have my access point at the top floor, then my study area or this place where I'm sitting here, uh, they have to go through a couple of uh, blocks or, or other bit, what are many, uh, spaces. So five gigahertz will suffer, and a lot of the time I will lose the signal. Then I have to turn tune back to two point four gigahertz, and then five G. Yeah, five G. They they have uh, identified a few bands of signal: the lower band, the middle band, and the higher one yeah, for enhanced broadband. They call it enhanced broadband. Uh, your you're talking around the range of 26 to 28 gigahertz. Uh, but these are very specific uh, for specific types of uh, applications, not for all applications. Because if you go up to this uh, frequency, as you know, attenuation will become more severe and therefore they cannot have a large cell size. A lot of them will have to be more like a Wi Fi, a small confined area. Then then they, they, they can have a good signal, then they can uh, apply whatever, the high bandwidth types of application. Essentially like VR, VR, virtual reality, uh, telemedicine, you know, telemedicine, yeah, maybe telemedicine, and so on. Um, let's see how many more slides. Maybe we can take a short break now. I, I was supposed to do it very quickly, but anyway, uh, this is almost 11. Normally, I take a break every 45 to 50 minutes. It take about 10 minutes to come back in 10 minutes time. All right? Okay, bro. <laughs>
Okay, uh, welcome back. Um, I was trying to see which part that we we could uh, skip because we've done before. Yeah. It was there. Okay, uh, I skip a few slides because we've done this thing so many times. So I think um, you can speed through very quickly, only touch those that we haven't. Uh, so are, are you seeing this one, thermal noise? Huh? Okay. Now uh, we, we mentioned just now all the various sources of impairment. So one of them is thermal noise. As I mentioned, thermal noise is due to agitation of electrons. And I think you have done this in electronics, yeah? how to measure the power, the noise power, uh, which is present in all electronic devices and transmission media. I just now, the loss part of the noise is transmission media itself, because some of the transmission media can be very noisy due to also interference like noise and uh, ionization and so on especially long distance not up any uh, transmission like like the sky sky wave just now ground wave and sky wave so you cannot eliminate this and it is a function of temperature so uh, you can calculate the amount uh, by a certain formula eh? They can they use a certain formula called uh, Boltzmann constant. I don't know whether we have it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so this is particularly significant for satellite communications. Yeah, the uh, satellite, we, even though it is clear line of sight, uh, in a sense that you can see the direction of the antenna without any object in between, but there are many atmospheric uh behavior condition in between and yeah, those who does uh electron uh, any propagation maybe may have been introduced many um atmospheric uh, behavior at, at the uh, space level that uh will affect the signals from satellite yeah. one of them Apart from absorption, there are scintillating. Scintillating, like some, some, some kind of electronics um, emission uh, at at the upper ionization at the gas gas level at the, at the uh, atmosphere. So anyway, that's for antenna and propagation of your people. So the amount of power normally is. Uh, measured in one hertz of bandwidth and that's called n naught and it's given by this kt times b where b is one one hertz right? so k is a boltzmann constant like this and t is temperature in kelvin absolute temperature eh? you know the difference absolute temperature it goes to minus 273 uh, C. Yeah? So the zero of Kelvin is minus 273. And therefore at a zero freezing temperature, it's 273 Kelvin, which is equivalent to this K times T. So it is assumed to be independent of frequency and sometimes it is also called white noise. You can hear white noise. The noise ni dia dia ada color juga. Maknanya dia dia cover all frequency. Just like white white is uh, comprised of all the spectrum colors in the spectrum. So since this noise ni is uh, is considered as cover covering all frequency from minus frequency to plus frequency and therefore they call it white noise 
right? So uh, thermal noise is given by this times B, where B is the bandwidth. Or in what or in decibel what? This is the the, uh, the equation is all logarithmic, and all these numbers ni jeda jeda boleh represent lah because they are fixed numbers minus two two eight dot six dB watt plus this plus this. Okay. So this is thermal noise that you have to contend with at the receiver. The other noise, uh, intermodulation noise, which is something on your design. It is it is not uh, something that is uh, that that you cannot do anything about. So it occurs if signals with different frequencies share the same medium, ataupun when you do modulation um, between one signal to the other, they produce so-called sideband. I don't know whether you did in your earlier communications. Uh, when when you modulate uh, one signal with the other of a higher frequency, there are many sidebands. So that sideband can interfere with another channel, and they can they can intermodulate. Maknanya, they modulate with another side, uh, channel in the in the uh, other channels in the adjacent channel. That's called intermodulation. So interference caused by signal produced at a frequency that is a sum or difference of original frequency. So this is what I mean just now when you modulate it generate a lot of sidebands due to the sum or difference. Yeah. Omega C is the carrier and then the, the other sideband here, w, Omega C plus uh, a certain frequency, yeah, Omega M for example, and then Omega C minus Omega M. I don't have any illustration here. For it. If, if it is in the class, I can draw on the board. Here I cannot do anything. But you you know I think you must have gone through this, and then crosstalk. Crosstalk is is almost like uh, uh, intermodulation, but in this case it just interfere. It it doesn't modulate. So the signal from your adjacent uh, channel uh, get coupled into the main channel. Yeah. This is called unwanted. Uh, coupling between signals, or particularly if if it is if you're talking about a uh, transmissions cable between uh, one cable to the next, uh, if if it is not properly shielded, the EM electromagnetic from one cable can cross over to the next cable, and then cause interference, which is called cross talk. I think it originated from those telephone days. Uh, when this thing happened, you can hear conversation over of the other people. Yeah, so like somebody is talking uh, on on the same line, telephone line. That's why it's called uh, cross talk. Even though you know you don't have to have conversation, but just signals. But the term originated from that period of time when people were uh, using telephone and the cable the cable was copper cable nowadays uh, mostly uh, fiber at the background and then there's impulse noise these are irregular noise or noise spikes that is in the atmosphere you know, due to electron things and so on and it could be due to some uh, terrestrial matter like okay, meteor, if you transmit over a long distance, this meteoric burst can also interfere with your signal. Uh, short duration and relatively high amplitude. It's like a spike and especially kalau you, you are working or you are using it in a factory environment where there are lots of machines and they produce uh, electric charge, electrostatic charge from the elect electrical machine and so on. Caused by external electromagnetic disturbances or faults and flaws in the communications. 
Yeah, it could be due to other other reasons, folks. Maybe the when your connection they are not good and they generate sparks and so on. So you in elect, in communications we have many controlling parameter uh, in order to evaluate the performance of your system. And one of the controlling parameter is EB over N naught. But essentially it's a signal to noise ratio. This is noise for sure. But EB is the energy per bit. So uh, energy per bit, they derive from the signal that we transmit. So kalau signal to is a high modulation order signal, like uh, QAM, QAM 64, pernah, pernah dengar QAM? QAM 64, come on, 128. Pernah, eh? So one QAM to 64, QAM 64, what a bit? Uh, 16. Yeah, what a bit? 64 is 8 bit, I think. Or, or rather, 6 six to the power of what about 64? Uh, 2 to the power of what about 64? 2 to the power of 6. 6. 6 bit. So, maknanya, one symbol. S means the for symbol, uh, which is a signal, carries six bits. Ada, ada some noise at the background. Yeah? That's not the sort of noise that I'm talking about here in this class. Okay, please mute. Um, so this is the controlling um, parameter called signal to noise ratio. Uh, EB over N naught, ratio of signal energy per bit to noise power density per hertz. Yeah. And this one is represented as S, which is a symbol. S is the energy of the symbol divided by the rate, data rate, R. R, you know, depending on how, uh, what transmission rate you are using. And that gives you S over KTR. So the bit error rate for digital data is a function of EB over N naught. So if you're given a value of EB over N naught to achieve a desired error rate, this formula can be used. So normally you say, okay, uh, given that you have uh, EB over N naught uh, of uh, so much, uh, how much data can you transmit, for example? Or what is the what is the probability of error that you will uh, achieve, or rather, you you will get with this kind of uh, EB over N naught and uh, or and and the uh, what do you call it transmission rate. So this is good for people who does uh, design later for research. As bit rate increases, transmitted signal power must increase to maintain the required EB over N naught. Jadi uh, kalau your channel is um, transmitting at a higher rate, talking about gigabits for example, um, then this EB over N naught factor must also increase and and not doesn't change so you need to increase the eb energy per bit right so i'm including this maybe for some of you who will be doing research further or maybe even in your project now this is an important parameter that you will uh, need to know in order to design your system other impairments Atmospheric absorption, uh, need, tadi I mentioned a little bit, water vapor, oxygen, and so on. Multipath, we mentioned about multipath so many times, and refraction. And we've talked about refraction also. Uh, this is an illustration. You, in, katakan, this is in Manhattan. Siapa nak pergi Manhattan? Sekarang ni tak payah pergi lah. Tempat tu, memang 
very bad sekarang ni dengan coronavirus dengan uh, dengan, dengan apa riot ni but anyway normally dia model uh, radio propagation dipanggil Manhattan Manhattan uh, apa entah Manhattan tu maknanya macam ni lah dia punya road dia uh, in, in a mesh structure and dia tall building jadi this is illustration how your signal uh, can propagate around the block it can be reflection through uh, something in the middle here uh, lamp post i don't think lamp post ada tengah-tengah jalan <laughs> but something yeah tengah jalan as apa scattering scattering um and the other one is reflection so dia ada reflection here and then dia macam snooker ball ya yeah. orang yang main snooker ni tahulah you you may want to go somewhere else but you have to go around the block you have to take this path so there are many path but this one is considered those yang eventually will be uh will be collected by your receiver and d is the scattering eh, sorry uh, diffraction yeah yang can go around a sharp edges macam ni just like a voice or, or sound so this are the, this is one illustration of the various propagation mechanism i uh, mentioned this many time reflection occurs when signal encounters a surface that is large relative to the wavelength so the keyword is that the surface is large relatively relative to the wavelength so kalau we're talking about 2 gigahertz wavelength here is about i don't know about uh, 10 cm maybe 10 cm jadi uh, most object will be bigger than 10 cm and they will be reflected um but at the edges of the block uh, then they can they can get refracted they can go around the block at the edge of an in, impenetrable maknanya dia tak boleh dia nak penetrate they go around it and then scattering when incoming signal hits an object that's whose size is in the order of the wavelength of the signal or less maknanya kalau dia uh come across something around 10 cm punya size yeah, they can reflect in, in all directions and you you cannot predict where it should it could go depending on the surface of that object so example of foliage lamppost street signs walking pedestrian even people the other people who are walking in front um, i can affect the signal now another um apa ni measure yeah to characterize our channel uh, is so called time dispersion meaning how long does it take for a signal yeah all all the signal from different path to eventually arrive at the receiver so this is called time dispersion because of all this propagation they do not all come together at the same time they 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 come at different uh, time and and different magnitude yeah. so different paths have different propagation delays and the received signals pulse will become wider wider than the transmitted signal uh, so below they become wider some of them may be even too late that they can ignore ataupun too small you can you can simply uh, discard them and also it depends on on the on the apa? data rate the data rate that we are transmitting if it is a uh, very low bit rate the the pulse will be wider eh? and then then you have uh, uh, a lot more dispersion the other one is fading we mentioned this so many times again multiple copies of signal arrive at different phases and the received signal they may add constructively or destructively 
Uh, contohnya macam ni, at certain point for example, uh, time, they can cancel each other, at other times, it construct, reconstruct and become strong. So, they will fluctuate like this. With this particular example, uh, this is the illustration of two signals arriving at two different times. Uh, so, effect of multiple propagation, multiple copies of signal arrive at different phases and then it can cause inter-symbol interference. So, symbol means signal that represent, that carry the, uh, the information, the message. So, dalam one symbol too, it, it is um, a, a modulated information. Yeah, whether macam tadi lah, dia macam QAM 16 ke 64 ke. So, this is what it means by symbol. So, when you send them, you can't see what they are. And because of this multiple propagation effect, they cause uh, interference to the next channel. So this is called inter-symbol interference. One or more delayed copies of pulse may arrive at the same time as the primary pulse for a subsequent bit. Subsequent bit ni maknanya uh, bit yang seterusnya. Or rather symbol, it should be symbol here. Symbol. Again, because there's no diagram, it's quite difficult to explain here. Yeah. Jadi, bila dia delay, one, the punya yang, the, the late signals tu, will uh, get in the path of the subsequent signal, signal yang seterusnya. Yeah. Uh, kalau di illustration nanti, we can examine. Or maybe from time to time we can do this. Okay, how do I share this? Uh, what are you seeing right now? Same one at open a uh, different page? Same. Same. Oh, I have to stop sharing that one and then bring you here. Stop sharing. And then start sharing. Uh, where is the How do I get that? I'm gonna zoom in here. It's zoom for me down here. And now, window. this one. Uh, I'm struggling with this one. Let me see if I can. Okay, lah, kemudian lah. Yeah. Microsoft Meet ni dia, untuk sharing ni dia agak constraint sikit. Okay, nanti saya illustrate dari ISI. Uh, now is the Doppler shift. Now, most of the time, 
uh, people nowadays are apa, talking while while they are in in a vehicle, eh? whether they are driving their of hand apa, hands off or most of the time passengers. Eh? So uh, how does this affect the uh, the channel, the channel that they are using? Because there are many factors, you know, they can at one point they can get a good line of sight, but another point uh, they may be behind a block. They can be under under a tunnel, and for most instances, then this factor called Doppler shift will be uh, considered as uh, impairment. Okay, um, so let me see. The illustration is not very good here. So suppose you are in this car here, and this is um, the I don't know transmitter, transmitter the base station. So you are traveling this way. There's somebody coming in. Here. Yeah. Man. Wait, I can't. What happened? Um, on your page thirty. Okay. Uh, where was my fish? Nampak dah ni tadi, the, the same page tadi, Doppler shift. Huh? Ah, okay. So, there there are many other slides yang give better illustration lah, but this this is a very simple, very poor one. So, this car, this, uh, in communicating with this S, I don't know what S is, or remote source S, which is a base station lah, katakan. Now, it's traveling at a certain speed, at um, a, a certain distance d uh, it it is uh, it is now traveling at a certain speed and distance and the propagation the radio propagation will be uh, affected uh, according to the speed and direction yeah. oh this is not a very good one. Assume a source to be far away, uh, delta phi. Delta phi is it's not written here. Normally, phi means phase. It's equal to two, di two phi delta L. Delta L is this one. Um, the uh, part of the the triangle, yeah, um, that form this uh, particular path. That so that that will determine or give you delta phi it's equal to two pi delta l divided by lambda. Lambda is the wavelength, and then uh, which is equal to this. Now, due to the movement of the vehicle um, the frequency of the radio wave uh, will be either increase or decrease depending on the direction so that is called uh, fd or doppler shift frequency so which is equal to delta phi divided by 2 pi delta t yeah, 2 pi delta t is this distance because you're traveling in this particular direction, which is is actually V cos theta um, del over delta, uh, sorry, V cos theta over uh, wavelength, or maybe referring back to this one. 
Uh, delta phi divided by 2 pi delta. 2 pi delta, which is equivalent to the frequency shift, is equal to V cos uh, theta divided by lambda. And theta is the angle here. It makes with the base station. And lambda is the wavelength that we are operating. So now this shift if frequency will affect your channel so sometimes um your channel will be broader sometimes it will be compressed doppler shift relates to the mobile velocity and spatial angle between direction of motion of the mobile and the arrival of the wave so um, the channel will have to be good enough to handle this kind of doppler shift shifting of the um, of the carrier frequency. Okay, we will revisit that because this one is too brief. Yeah. I think that there are many other illustrations that is better than that. Uh, now we are into fading, the yeah, types of fading, and all this. We, we've seen fast fading, slow fading, flat fading. Now, flat fading means attenuation essentially it's um it's experiencing fading but it is not changing so it's flat and therefore it's almost like attenuation attenuation maknanya pelemahan uh selective fading is like uh, fast fading a certain frequency it it um experience fade and then there's two statistical model that uh, is commonly used to represent um, this channel, yeah, the fading channel. So one is really fading, the other one is Russian. Uh, this one is normally used in uh, open kind of uh, propagation like our terrestrial between our mobile and the base station. And Russian is used in indoor normally where we have one no normally we have one line of sight and the rest are reflection whereas in really fading um there isn't a one single line of sight a lot of the time they are multi-path fading so these are the model now some of these are probably not okay this, this one is not in your syllabus forward error correction, but I have to mention here also, this is uh, being used in order to uh, recover uh, your signal from any errors that they experience. So having gone through all those, you know, phenomenon, fading, attenuation, and, and so on and so forth, um, even though you may design your receiver to be, uh, you know, good enough to detect the low signal power uh, but there are bound to be errors that the, you cannot you cannot recover or you cannot um uh what do you call it overcome so at at the at the link level uh which is another protocol layer um they will have to incorporate some error correction um protocol um that they they add extra bits yeah, of uh, information uh a certain pattern that when the receiver uh the other end uh read it back they try to compute and if the compute uh come up with the correct codes, then it will consider as the this receive signal are correct. But when the compute that the it doesn't match with the codes, then they will um, consider this as error. And there are there are solution, there are protocol that they can use to recover the signal, to correct the signal. Yeah. So like Reed Solomon code, uh, BCH. I don't know, Bose code, code, code. Uh, this, this I use, yeah, especially for long distance 
communication like satellite uh, because sometimes you can see very bad signal so they have to recover the signal so this is why uh, forward error correction is uh, included here uh, but it is not part of the syllabus just to give you an awareness that it is necessary here as well uh, but this one may be adaptive equalization because of all those impairment your signal your your symbol that you receive will be distorted okay so your receiver can be uh, made to to uh, uh, to recover the signal yeah uh, according to the impair impairment or the the channel uh, you know the channel characteristic so the equalizer can recover the signal by equalization <laughs> you know equalization means you offset whatever distortion that the signal has experienced uh, along the way so maybe certain frequencies they experience a deep fit then the equalizer will try to reamplify the signal that experience that that fit that distortion yeah uh, so this is what it called by equalization uh, you know without illustration it's quite difficult but i i hope we can uh, revisit this thing so uh, so the signal that uh, that has experienced all this uh, impairment can be recovered yeah, without uh, or rather with a high degree of accuracy this is equalization now this one i think is also part of your syllabus diversity techniques uh, we will revisit here but this is quite brief here yeah? or oh, maybe there are some Ah, okay. I I will skip this one. You can see you can see you can read it. Now here, adaptive equalization can be applied to transmission that carry analog or digital information, analog voice or video, digital data, digitized video, voice or video. Uh, used to combat inter symbol interference involves gathering dispersed symbol energy back into its original time interval then your original uh original shape eh? so some of the signal dispersed to they, they 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 recreate they collect back uh, these are the techniques so anyway this one is essentially signal processing so we just uh, appreciate the uh the technique now diversity Diversity means uh, we use the different, um, you know, different different parameter to send multiple copies of the signal. This is based on the fact that individual channel experience individual fading events. So uh, when we send our signal from transmitter to receiver, it experiences different channels due to uh, different you know uh, blocks that they go through some of them may experience poor channel fading events so diversity uh, uses the different parameter to transmit the same signal so that when they receive when they go to when they, they arrive at the receiver the probability of all the signals uh impact or, or loss is minimal is small okay so there are here three types space diversity meaning they send using more than one transmitter or antenna uh, so that they can experience through different physical transmission path and this is lead to the question of mimo and you will hear i think you have maybe heard of mimo m-i-m-o multiple input multiple output essentially multiple antennas yeah 5g is using a lot of that so different antenna are sending the same signal and they are separated 
beyond a certain number of wavelength. And the idea is that they will experience different paths and the probability of all the path experience fading is minimal. Okay, this is space diversity. Um, frequency diversity, they are sent over different frequency, of course. Yeah. Um, where the over large frequency bandwidth or carried over multiple frequency carriers. Again, the assumption is that the probability that they will like this, the multiple or the different carrier frequency will experience fading is, is small. And then the time diversity, uh, meaning the signals, the same signal, the same symbols are sent over different time slots. And they have uh, multiple antenna that, that send them in different order. Yeah. So uh, at the receiver, the receiver knows the code. They will, they have, uh, you know, they also have multiple antennas and they will combine all these signals again according to that code and then um, if there is any any error they can they can uh, recover um, you know if there's one transmitter has an error the other transmitter can recover so again uh, without the illustration is quite difficult but uh, this is diversity diversity in other words is trying to uh, using the different physical uh, parameter of a signal and a channel uh, in order to transmit your signal in order to ensure that they can be received with minimal error, yeah, with, with a minimum probability of error. So uh, that's what diversity is. Now, Oh, is this on? Path loss modeling. We've seen this one, we've done it. So path loss modeling, they mentioned you can use Maxwell's equation. Um, how many have heard of Maxwell equation? You've done it in electromagnetic theory. Yeah. I think. This is the basic equation for electrical and electromagnetic. So for <coughs> electromagnetic um, communications for machines, electrical machines, power generation. The basic equation that, um, you know, that, that govern this thing is, is a set of equation called Maxwell's equation. Um, but they are not too good for here. It is too complex. So uh, in order to do our modeling path, path loss modeling, we can use other more, you know, tractable types of method, uh, in this case called ray tracing. So ray tracing, they can represent your electromagnetic waves as a point source. It's like a light, yeah? like a torch light. So instead of ray, uh, instead ray tracing approximation can be used to represent wave fronts instead of representing using Maxwell equation wave fronts, uh, which are very complex, uh, instead we can use ray tracing, which is like, like, a, like a torch light. Ray tracing model can incorporate reflection, scattering and diffraction. And still computer packages are often used to derive detailed models. So we'll see some of these packages, hopefully, I don't know, okay. Maybe MATLAB also have it. We will have to use some of this for part of your course. Oh, they tak ada lagi on this one. But uh, anyway, we can take another short break. We come back in about ten minutes, and then I will finish the punya lecture seven, which essentially I think we have seen some of them. But anyway, uh, it's good to see how they see it. they they present it. And then we have some other discussion. Okay, come back in 10 minutes.
Bye. Ciao 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 ciao. Ciao. Sorry about that. Exited. Look at one of Nor Hafiza. Come on, Edu. Jalan kereta. Oh, awak nak try Doppler shift ni. Ah, Nor Hafiza. Nak experiment, nak experiment Doppler shift, ha? Huh? Bukan, bro. <laughs> nah, dah masuk kereta tu nak try, kan? Tengok-tengok <laughs> video tu. Uh, elok juga tu. <laughs> Terus pergi eksperimen. Okay, okay. Uh, okay. Ada lagi, ya? Eh? Okay, let's um, <laughs> retry. Macam mana nak share. Present now. Okay, ni yang baru eh. Okay, some some of these things are important. The rest I skip because we have done. Um, okay, this one we have done again and again. So I skip this very quickly. Now, uh, this is the illustration we mentioned about isotropic um, antenna radiation. So it is a sphere like this, which is only theoretical. It is not uh, practical. You cannot really generate this. Uh, so all the antenna are referred against this. This is called effective isotropic radiated power. So most of the antenna, they have radiation this way going ataupun a loop macam donut going around so uh, they compare that one and that is called eirp represents the maximum radiated power available from transmitter in the direction of the maximum antenna gain it's compared to isotropic radiator so that that's what um, eirp is now uh, the what do you call that the dipole eh? Dipole antenna, which is a basic antenna, propagation, uh, 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 rather, the radiation pattern is like this. So you can see one loop here, another loop here. And, and it's almost like a donut. Yeah? The other leku uh, sini, but it doesn't go through. And this is um, uh, radiation pattern for dipole antenna. In practice, effective radiated power is used to denote the maximum radiated power is compared to half wave 
uh, half wave dipole antenna. Oh, there's another one called effective radiated power compared against half wave. This is the half wave dipole antenna. And kalau you compare this one, they call ERP. I seldom come across this one, but not most of the time EIRP. Uh, I'm not sure the context of this one is, it's uh, looked like to me, um, you know, finding the signal, a propagation, a receive signal or, or receive power, uh, given all the parameters. Yeah. So this, this will be an interesting or, or rather a simple kind of project you can do using spreadsheet. You have all the unit here, must, you must have a formula and all these parameters that will be given and then you can find uh, whatever the, the question wants you to do. Fate margin in this case. So fate margin meaning how many, uh, how much um, power that you should reserve in in your uh, in your channel in order to ensure that you receive um, a good channel or receive signal as you know a certain amount of time uh, so that is a design parameter that normally people will uh, be looking to to design but this one rather high yeah fit margin is rather high Maybe this is for, I don't know, for a good signal, but normally it's about 6 to 10 dB. This is rather high. So this is uh, the way probably some uh, of this problem can be solved. So you, you have a template like this, and then all these numbers can be plugged in, and then you, you can get the numbers here. This is called link budget. And this is a link budget calculator. So link budget is is just like your your financial budget, you know, your pocket money. So at the end of at the first start of the semester, you know you you know what you have to spend. Uh, you know how much, or, or rather, you can list all the things that you need to spend, and then and then you you can request how much money that you need. Uh, in order to survive <laughs> and plus a margin for for any emergency you know normally you want to reserve about five percent ten percent for some in in unintended expenses in consequential maknanya emergency lah sakit ke ataupun tiba-tiba kena beli something kena balik so that is what link budget is all the gains and all the losses Plus fit margin. Fit margin ni amat like emergency use lah yang cakap. Uh, Sometimes they call uh, uh, no, incidents. No. Anyway, something that you will need in terms of emergency. Incidentals, incidentals. Okay. All right. Okay, we've seen this one. We've seen this one. We've seen this one. I've shown you this one very quickly just last week. Yeah, we can go through very quickly yourself. Maybe we can we can illustrate by some examples, Nanti. Multiple knife edge diffraction point we have seen last week, where you can represent mountains or buildings like a knife edge. This is called a knife edge. And then if you have multiple one, you can represent them as one uh, one knife edge. You see uh, I don't particularly like the mathematics, but I just want to show you the um, exponent. We mentioned about exponent, right? Okay, maybe we can we can relook at this one. 
Radio propagation models are derived using a combination of empirical and analytical method. All right. So this is what I've been saying. Empirical means you actually do the measurement. So there is a whatever a truck. Yeah? Normally uh, a four-wheel drive with a receive antenna and all the equipment that measure. They go around uh, the place that they want to cover, whether it is a city or uh, other areas. So they log it and then they can map it. So this is called empirical and then analytical. So with all this data, they can process it and match with the, the likely or the closest uh, mathematical model or statistical model that fit the data. So this method implicitly take into account all the propagation factors, both known and unknown, through actual measurement because there are other factors that um you know analytical model um cannot actually uh factor in so they have to do this thing because this thing captures everything actual measurement you, know, you cannot uh, just depend entirely on mathematical model unless you have done all the actual measurement so path loss models are used to estimate the received signal level as a function of distance. Okay, so you have this model, mathematical model. Then, uh, wherever you put your receiver, you should be able to estimate and predict what kind, uh, what is the level of signal that you should get there. So, with the help of this model, we can predict SNR signal to noise ratio for a mobile communication system. So. Um, how far it can go before it drops below a certain threshold, for example. And then, then you will have to start um, building another cell or a base station. So that's what path, model, path loss model is meant for. There are two such models, log distance path loss model and log normal shadowing model. Okay, we, we've seen this one a couple of uh, many times. Path loss model is essentially this, you know, the freeze, free space equation plus, sorry, this one is log normal. Uh, the path loss at a particular location for any value of D is random and distributed log normally about the mean distance dependent value given by. Okay, um, there are better illustration than this, but what it is saying is that there are this type called log, log normal uh that represent the this the signal at any distance or any point in the same distance d so d could be 100 meters for example so you you measure at one point 100 meters and then at another point 100 meters also and you move around but still 100 meters the distribution statistical distribution of the signal you receive will be equal to this uh, PLD, which is power, power loss at distance D, plus this factor. This is a distribution yeah, called uh, zero mean Gaussian distributed random variable with standard deviation uh, sigma, which is really um, Gaussian. Uh, that's why they call it log normal. Normal is Gaussian meaning they have they follow that the, the bell shape uh statistical distribution like this so pl of at d naught uh we we saw this one at d is equal to d naught which is the you know the, the reference point where you uh consider that as the uh, far field region and it is interface between near field and far field region D naught uh, plus this one D over D naught. We've seen this one. Uh, this is another this straightforward method plus this distribution statistical distribution which is log normal. So it follows that pattern or that statistical distribution called bell bell shape or Gaussian random. Uh, distributed random variable 
there's no illustration so it's quite difficult to appreciate but you as you go back you you know you take all this thing you can visit any any of these uh, website info and you can get more information about this um, now exponent so for the free space we only see two okay because uh, that is the sphere the sphere the the um, the, uh, the antenna that form a spherical pattern yeah is this one it is a sphere so it radiates in all directions so that was the space the surface of the uh, radiation pattern d squared now the others uh like this yeah, typically urban area cellular radio uh, urban may be sedang now you can see like sedang 2.7 to 3.5 shadowed urban cellular radio maybe this is center of kl klcc or where there are tall building three three to five in building now as I mentioned, in in building, you may have one direct line of sight. Yeah. So because of that, some signal they can be strengthened. It, it become like uh, uh, they call waveguide. So signal they propagate uh, and they strengthen each other, and therefore the punya exponent is even less than free space. Yeah. Maknanya, it's almost like they have a gain. 1.6 to 1.8 as opposed to the normal free space which is 2 all right uh, then inside the building obstructed inside the building so building with many walls and and floors so this one is quite high 4 to 6 and factories only 2 to 3 factories because it's normally open yeah, the only objects are normally machineries and shelves and so on. So this one is almost like a free space. Ah, block normal. Describe the random shadowing effect. So normally this is for shadowing, meaning it is behind large buildings or or mountain hills. Random shadowing, but it is random. Random which occur over a large number of measurements which have the same TR separation but have different levels of clutter on the propagation but Different levels of clutter meaning different objects. Could be building, could be mountain, could be uh, whatever, yeah, trees. This random effect of shadowing are accounted using Gaussian distribution. In practice, the value of N and sigma uh, often computed from measured data using linear regression method. So this is what I mentioned. You have to do lots of measurement, and then using some linear regression, you you try to match it with some statistical distribution. And in this case, the closest one is Gaussian, and then you can derive uh, n n is actually is should be mu, which is a mean, and sigma is the standard deviation. And it follows Gaussian distribution. So this is uh, one sample. I think we've seen this one as well. Um, this shows uh, path loss against distance, separation distance, TR, in different environments, uh, different places. PA building, Stuttgart, Dusseldorf, Bank building, Kronberg, Hamburg. But unfortunately, it's not not really very clear it's quite difficult for you to figure out uh, let's try this one no, it's, it's quite difficult so at every kilometers of distance they measure the signal power yeah and then they can do regression linear regression and and find out what is the most uh closest uh no characteristic 
that will represent that particular path. So in this case, I don't know what is n1. Um, n is equal to 1 is, well, whatever. <laughs> uh, this one is n2, 4, 5. Depends uh, on, on, uh, on the type of uh, city or village or whatever. So presumably, this one is inside a building. This one is free space, open field. This one is now becoming like an urban, suburban area. This one is more urban, uh, big cities like, you know, with lots of tall buildings and so on. Now, this, this is uh, the Gaussian just now, probability. The probability that the received signal level will exceed a certain values gamma, uh, which shows that the signal is strong enough, yeah, where gamma is the threshold, can, can be calculated from the cumulative density function. Cumulative density function is, you know, is uh, statistical distribution to measure the the amount of something in this case uh, power yeah. so it represented as q which is the level if if you plot the statistical distribution it's the the tail or the the head yeah, of your uh, statistical distribution map so this is called q factor and yeah, the probability that the power is greater the power at d is greater than gamma which is the maybe a threshold that they set you can check this thing in in a table this is given in a normal gaussian table if there's any illustration maybe we can try to go through some example on this one so q gamma minus power received at the point d average power divided by a static, um, standard deviation. And you can refer this to a Gaussian table. This can be used to determine the percentage of coverage area in cellular system. So you, you can say that, okay, for this particular cell, we, we, will, we would like the signal to be more than uh, fit margin, let's say 10, 10 dB. So if it is less than 10 dB, we consider that as another cell. So you can plot that and that will be the area or the boundary of the cell. Uh, okay, outdoor propagation model, there are a number of, just now we mentioned also outdoor, but the model, there are a number of propagation, mobile radio propagation model to predict path loss over irregular terrain. Irregular terrain is like mountain, trees, even sea, lake, and so on. This method aims to predict the signal strength at a particular sector, but very widely in complexity and accuracy. So there are many methods people have been doing it for so long, but some of them, you know, so much on it, um, not so accurate, but they have some correction factor. These models are based on systematic interpretation of measurement data obtained in the service area. So uh, many of them were done in, like say, Japan. Yeah, so Japan environment may be different from the rest. So they have correction factors. <coughs> so these are the models. I think the more popular one is Okumura and Hata model. Yeah, I'm, I'm not very particular about the others, but these are the two. Indoor. Indoor radio channel differs from traditional mobile radio channel in, in that the distance covered are much smaller and variability of the environment is greater for a much smaller range of PR separation distance. So they, this is a characteristic of indoor. They, you know, small, yeah, they're bound to be small, much smaller and variability is less, meaning it is more constant. 
Uh, it is strongly influenced factors such as layout of the building, construction materials, and building type. So some building, they have lots of little rooms and rooms, you know, varies according to the wall. If the brick wall is different, glass wall is different, uh, some board is different. Uh, construction materials, whether it is bricks or again wood, or even uh, steel. Okay, so um, so the, the, these are the parameters. Log distance path model. Both theoretical and measurement based propagation model indicate that average received signal power decreases logarithmically with distance, whether indoor, whether outdoor, indoor radio channels. Uh, okay, so this this one is. No, not talking about indoor only. So it is saying that logarithmically, it will uh, signal will 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 attenuate, decrease and logarithmically, meaning uh, every you know every ten ten kilometer, for example, it it will decrease uh, as you as you progress as you proceed. The average large-scale path loss for an arbitrary TR separation is expressed as a function of distance by using a path loss exponent and O. Okay, this one I mentioned just now, but somehow this page got missed here. It should have been earlier. Uh, oh, okay. It's quite relevant here. Uh, path loss exponent and standard deviation measured in different buildings. So this one is talking about in-building still. Um, you see, it varies according to frequency also, and the type of building, retail stores, grocery stores, office, office, hard partition, soft partition, and then factory line of sight, there are textile, chemical, so many types, you know, different variation, and the frequency that you measure. So this is the exponent that you get. You can see that some of them has small exponent, meaning better propagation, less loss, uh, and variation, sigma standard deviation, uh, is some of them quite high, 9, 10, okay, but some of them quite consistent, 3 here. Okay. So uh, this is what they have measured. Um, in building, uh, all building, all location, same floor, or all location is 3.14, sigma 16.3, number of location 634. This, these are experimental results of some data collection method. Same floor, one floor, two floors, three floors. So as you go to more floors, you can see exponent increase. Same floor is small, 2.76, but three floors, 5.22, so signal has uh, weakened. Uh, and office building one, same floor again, 3.27, west wing, blah, blah, blah. So this, you know, this are specific building, but what you can see is, uh, if let's go to several floors, it will weaken. Exponent become bigger, I mean. But if it is same floor, then, uh, generally, it's around two to three. West wing, fifth floor. I don't know why it is small. But anyway. Oh, okay. That's the end of this particular slide. Um, but nevertheless, this slide missed many important things. Uh, I just took it because it covers many points. But as you do that, then you miss many small important points. So um, let me uh, let me see. Um, if I show you this one, you I don't know you are you are you seeing this one? Four point one small scale multipath propagation. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yes. This, this is extract from this book by Rapopo. 
uh, somebody extract it and then put it in this manner. Uh, I I like to give you this one as your reference. Yeah, you can go back, or you already back. <laughs> Many of the points that we discussed just now are covered here. So the details are here. Doppler shift, for example. Um, some of the mathematics might make you a bit cringe a bit. <laughs> this is uh you you have to remember convolution theory. In digital communication, maybe you have done convolution theory. If you have signals passing through a channel yeah, in time domain, you want to know what's the output, you have to do convolution. This is called convolution. Uh, looks very frightening. Um, but if you use it in time, uh, in frequency domain, it's just measure, it's a multiplication of the spectrum, spectrum of signal against the spectrum of the channel. But um, what I want to highlight here mm -hmm. is um, okay, this particular one uh, illustrate the time dispersal. So remember, we say that signals they get um, propagated in different directions and they may arrive or they will arrive at different time with different amplitude so this is the illustration here one signal yeah, at times tau t naught or tau uh, the first component arrive here at times tau naught the next component arrive here at times tau 1 reduce yeah, attenuated maybe absorbed by the building material for example and then there's nothing at tau 2 at tau 3 there's another one a little bit stronger uh, but delayed so much tau 4 uh, you know it gets weaker and it gets weaker all the time as it uh, disperse or, or rather at a very uh, delayed amount tau n minus one yeah, which is can be well well be beyond the uh, signal uh, the, the so-called coherent time which i'm going to explain later so the next one the next pulse they come here and they have a different <coughs> behavior so the first one arrive okay the second one stronger so it's a different path then they have a, another uh, component arriving at tau 2 whereas this one doesn't have so you can see these are different path okay? these are different path and they experience different uh, propagation mechanism and the this measure is called this perceiveness of the channel and this is a mathematical representation delta is a pulse you know this arrow is represented as a pulse tau is the delay yeah tau one tau two tau three a is the amplitude and this is a summation and then this is what you uh, this is the channel characteristic h Now, uh, this is what I want to highlight. <clears throat> Relationship between bandwidth and receive power. So, there's too much of mathematics here. Just want to skim through some of them. Um, okay, this one is almost the same illustration of the previous diagram uh, but this is realistic channel real, realistic data you see the first component arrive here this and then the second one is somewhere here and then the following one subsequently they die off and this is called excess delay yeah and then the next pulse if it's behind you can't really appreciate here very much So uh, 
this is uh, time time domain signal yeah? receive power uh, but time you know according to the time axis this is oh this is wavelength different wavelength and what you see here corresponding narrow band signal so the signal that you receive will be uh, you can see you know pulses like this is is almost you if you're if you're seeing from this direction you can see uh, some signals and then you can see uh, fading at a certain wavelength yeah? and and they fluctuate over a certain wavelength um, these are some details of how they do experiments to measure the channel uh, they actually send pulses like this uh pulse generator and send it over the uh atmosphere or or the <coughs> space uh see tx is the transmitter and then they receive it and then from then they can uh they can interpret what kind of channel that that they have experienced by measuring measuring the receive signal These are other experiment with uh, spread spectrum. They call it channel sounding. This is essentially channel sounding is the same like this. They just send a certain pulse shape of known characteristic, send over the channel and then, and then receive yeah, at the other end and, and try to interpret the data. That's called channel sounding. This is some of the illustration of the result display from oscilloscope. And this is the actual channel. They can do frequency domain channel sounding as well, but they, they have to use a BNA vector, vector network analyzer, which is more expensive. Uh, this is another illustration of the uh, delay, propagation delay, or uh, this is what they call power delay profile for different types of channels. So this one outdoor, when they send a pulse and they, they measure at the other end, this is what they will see. There are many, uh, you know, different path the signal coming from different path the first one second one and then subsequently third fourth and this one is kind of uh, disappear but later another component reappear so there's so so many factors that can cause this and then they have to set a threshold beyond which they consider as uh, you know signal signal loss or whatever that they don't have to measure anymore. So this is for outdoor and it can go up to hundred millisecond or microsecond. Yeah. So they they will set a threshold in order to consider which are sufficient for them to uh, consider as. Uh, signal and the rest <clears throat> they can truncate or they can ignore now for the indoor it's a little bit different you can see the indoor the signals are closer together bunch up together uh, because they don't have to travel very far and most of them <clears throat> are almost you know almost the same and then they will die off 
Okay. So if you set a threshold, a certain amount of level of energy, you can ignore the smaller one. And all these about four or five components are considered as uh, sufficient to detect or to reconstruct your signal. Now, <clears throat> time dispersion parameters. Now, this is called dispersion of your channel. Yes, how much the channel disperses the signal. So instead of having one pulse here, it's dispersing over a certain amount of time. Yeah, in this case, microsecond. So this is called dispersive channel. So what are the parameters? The mean, mean access delay, all the rest are called access delay. Delay that is excessive or beyond, beyond what they expect. And then uh, RMS is very much like electrical engineering. So your, your voltage, your mean voltage, your RMS power, access delay spread. This is called delay spread. Yeah, how many seconds is your delay spread or millisecond? And this is how you calculate them. Mean, of course, all the the volt the, the power uh, at that particular time, power of the pulse, summation divided by summation of the power of the pulse. This is RMS, so very much like your voltage, uh, your, your electrical power. So it depends only on the relative amplitude of the multipath component. Typical RMS delay is spread for outdoor microsecond, indoor nanosecond. Maximum excess delay is defined to be the time delay during which multipath energy falls to x db yeah so this one this is a threshold that you set so uh this is called the delay spread beyond this uh, below this uh you consider as uh loss signal or, or excess that you don't need yeah? so excess delay is tau x minus tau naught so maybe tau x is here tau naught is here so the rest uh Ignore. T X tau x is maximum delay at which a multiple component is within x db. Tau not delay for the first arriving signal. Delay for first arriving signal is here. Tau not. Tau x, I, I would say is here. Uh, I guess this this is the oh okay this this is um, measured RMS delay spread for the different uh, location delay spread uh, sigma these are the numbers at different places these are the references uh, this is an illustration example of an indoor power delay profile. This is a very important one that very many people use. Illustration of RMS delay spread, mean excess delay, maximum excess delay, and threshold. So this is actual signal eh? they, they measure. One, they send a pulse, and then this is what they receive. And these are what their measurement is. So they measure all the component, the delay, and get the mean, the mean is here, 45 nanosecond. So beyond here, beyond this one, they ignore. Yeah, they just take this one. Threshold level, they start at minus 20 dB. Maximum excess delay, less than 10 dB. Oh, okay, this is the maximum. The rest, they ignore because they set here. Okay. Maximum excess delay is 84 nanosecond. And then the delay RMS, RMS, according to that formula, the actual the value minus mean squared 
is 46 nanosecond. So this is a, a very important uh, characteristic of a channel power delay profile. Now the other part I would delay uh, explaining, but I will give this as an assignment or rather reading assignment for you coherent bandwidth <clears throat> and try to follow them uh, and you can get some references from from some public lectures in the YouTube they, they explain about coherence bandwidth and this is another thing that I think all electrical or wireless communication engineers should understand because it it defines what kind of uh, <clears throat> data rate that you can you can sub, you can send over a certain type of channel particularly this particular diagram okay? this particular chart so i i would like you to go through this and <clears throat> and we will discuss about this when we come back again <clears throat> um, or next week or maybe even earlier okay? and then after that we will finish on mobile radio propagation. Then we can talk about other things. All right, this one. We we'll talk about really Rysian. Really and Rysian with certain parameter, they are they converge. They they become the same. Okay, so I think we can stop here for today. Um, so this is pretty much your fourth lecture, fourth or fifth. And we are on the second, <clears throat> second part of the semester, which means to say that we should have done nine lectures, nine lectures, whereas we have only done five, right, including uh, yesterday's event so uh, well I still have some time to catch up so we'll discuss uh, how we're going to handle the rest but uh, this is your assignment eh, reading assignment I'm, I'm not going to give test but maybe I will check how you uh, progress with the others and please also follow some of this YouTube I, I will try to find and then share with you in order for you to to self uh, study and then I will find some examples that we can I, I can share with you uh, in Putra Blast and then we can discuss the solution okay any questions are you still there I did. you seem to be a bit lost I can appreciate <laughs> This is uh, probably the toughest part of the subject. The rest are the quite easy. Uh, okay, before we go, we still need to take uh, another photo shoot. Uh, somebody can do it? Or how do I do it? Eh? Uh, I want to put you together in one page. Where do I do that? macam yang minggu lepas lah. Macam mana tu? Kita tekan titik tiga tu, lepas tu change layout kepada tile. Oh, okay. Uh, I managed to get everybody ke ni? Um, are you seeing my my ni ke tidak? Okay. No, no, Shazlina camera hang. All right. So I have how many here? Five times. Three, fifteen. Is that eh? 
Is that the right number? We, we should have 16. Oh, 16, including me. Fine. All right. So I'll take a print screen again. Then I can share with you so that we have a copy. Okay, check the picture on your, uh, on your WhatsApp. See, everybody is there. Is everybody there? Thank you. Right there, yeah. in the picture. Yeah, everybody. Okay, so that's your attendance sheet. <laughs> so, uh, all right, we can call it a day now and then um, i'll see how we can replace the other classes last time we were talking about wednesday right so maybe yeah. we can consider wednesday next wednesday all right okay, okay. thank you assalamualaikum assalamualaikum